Hey guys, I'm Jen Johns. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an elf on the shelf cake. And my handy little elf on the shelf is helping me today. His name is Whiskey. Get it? Whiskey. Ha ha ha. If you haven't met him yet, you need to make sure you check out his drone flying escapades from last year. They are quite entertaining. The link will be in the description box for those. Now, he helped me out with his mischievous ways. So here on the cake, we've got open presents, we've got Santa's snacks eaten, broken candy canes, tangled Christmas lights, but worst of all, he got into my cake. I'm super annoyed at that. I'm gonna show you guys how to make this cake, so let's get started on the tutorial. We're starting with our peppermint crunch buttercream. We're going to need between six to eight tablespoons of milk. We're going to need one cup of butter, make sure it's nice and soft. And we're going to be using about half a cup of these baking chips, they're peppermint flavored. And I can see that whiskey is already enjoying them. We need a little drop of red gel coloring. We're going to be using three teaspoons of peppermint extract and we need to have one kilogram of icing sugar, also known as confectioner sugar. So I've creamed the butter in the bowl of a stand mixer and I've got the paddle attachment on there. I'm going to add about half of my icing sugar and I'm just going to slowly mix and combine that to start off here with the buttercream. Locking it and turning it on to about medium speed. After you've given that a good decent mix, we're going to need some milk and uh, apparently somebody's having a little bit of a drink here. Too many baking chips, I suppose. We're gonna add in about two of tablespoons of the milk to start off here. And I'm also going to add in three teaspoons of the peppermint extract. I'm just gonna eyeball this there. There we go, and I'm gonna let that mix. Once we've got that mixed in, I'm going to add some more milk. And now that whiskey's out of the way, I can actually pour this in properly. So I'm going to add three more tablespoons of milk here. Now when you're adding milk into your buttercream, you can always use more if you want a thinner buttercream, or you can use less if you want a thicker version. So I'm just going to mix that up before I add any more icing sugar. Once that's combined, I can add the rest of my icing sugar. And then I'm also just going to add milk into the end here till I get the consistency that I really am looking for. And I want it to be nice and spreadable. I don't need to worry about it being stiff enough to pipe because I'm just going to be smoothing it onto the cake with a spatula. So I'm just going to stir that together now. And I might need to add a little bit more milk while this is going. So the buttercream is super thick at this point, so I know I'm going to need at least probably three more tablespoons of milk, and then I'm going to mix it again and see how it feels. Once you've made enough buttercream, you kind of just are able to tell the consistency that you're looking for, just by the way that it, whoa, sorry buddy, oh my gosh, um, but just by the way that it kind of sits in here and moves around with the mixer. So I'm going to just let that mix for a minute, and I'll be back. Once you've got that mixed together, we're going to add our coloring. Because I want it to be like a nice light pink, I'm just going to add one drop of the red coloring. And then after I mix that in, I'm also going to add in my peppermint chips. I'm just gonna mix this and add the chips. So we're ready to assemble the cake and make the fondant elements now. So here I have three eight inch round chocolate cakes. I'll put a link in the description box to my chocolate cake recipe if you wanna try it out. Now we're going to be using a bunch of different colors of fondant. So here I've got white, some brown, dark green, red, lime green, an emerald green, a sky blue, and I did have a royal blue or like a dark blue kicking around. I'm not quite sure where that ended up. Now down here in front, I've got a bunch of the different candies that I'm going to be using on the cake. I've got some peppermint pillows, silver drages, a yellow star candy, some red and white hearts, and then I've got some candy covered chocolate sunflower seeds for the lights on the Christmas tree. But you can use any variety of candy that you want to for your cake. Now here for the Christmas tree, I am going to be using three different uh, ice cream cones here. You, that's a little over the top, but I wanted a nice tall one. So I've got a regular sugar cone, kind of the rectangle based one with a darker one. This is the chocolate one because it's going to be the trunk, trunk of the tree. And then here I have the nice tall kind of regular sugar cone here as well. And of course, we're going to be using our peppermint crunch buttercream that we just prepared. 
So now we're going to fill the cakes with our buttercream. So I've just transferred the buttercream to a piping bag and I'm just going to put some here on top of the cake, one layer of the cake. And just taking a spatula, I'm just going to smooth that on here. You don't want to put too much in the middle um, or you'll be kind of overboard on peppermint, unless of course you're a peppermint lover. Then I'm going to transfer the next layer onto the top of that. And again, repeat that process putting the buttercream in the center, just piping that on and then smoothing it on with a spatula. And we'll finish off with the third layer on top here. So I'll pop that on top. Here we go. And then we're ready to cover the entire thing in the pink buttercream. So with the cake in the fridge, what I'm going to do now is put together the tree. So here I have that rectangle cone and what I've done is just cut off that larger top part and I'm going to take some of my buttercream and I just want to put a little kind of like as basically a little layer for glue just around that part like that. And then I'm going to put on this round kind of this light cover ivory one. And then around that base there, I'm just going to put some more icing and then I'm going to stick on this next level of cone to squish that down just like that. And then I'm going to move over here to the green fondant that I've rolled out. Now this is just a flower cutting tool and I'm just going to use it. You could use like, you could freehand these leaves or you could cut them with like an actual leaf cutter. I just found this tool and, or this cutter and kind of thought it was kind of perfect for this tree look that I'm going for. So what I'm going to do with the, these once they're cut off is I'm just going to attach them to the buttercream. So I'm going to have to cover this whole cone system here in the buttercream in order to get all of these layers covered. But what I'm going to do is just go around it and fill in the whole thing all the way to the top with these little pieces of the green fondant. Once you've got the tree covered in the green fondant pieces, I like to take a little bit of water just on the end of a paintbrush and just kind of like get a little spot that's just going to be a little bit damp. And then you can take the chocolate covered sunflower seeds and help to press them in there. The water doesn't do like a ton, but it just helps a little bit to help it adhere there. And then also repeat that for like the dragées. You can go all around the cake with the, or sorry, all around the tree here with the dragées and with the lights. Oh my goodness, it just wants to scoot away on me. These ones do not like to be held very much. So there we go. I'm just gonna stick that into the cake, or into the um, little tree here. And you can see it's pretty finicky. So there you go. So I'm going to cover the whole entire thing and then up to the top here, I'm going to take my star and I'm just going to put a little bit of water up there and then I'm just going to gently press that on top and then just kind of press it until you feel it's going to stand up. So I'm going to finish covering the cake and sorry, covering the tree and then I'm going to um, show you guys when it's all finished. With the tree completed, I'm not going to lie, it's super annoying to try to get all those things on there, but just power through it. Um, what we're going to do next is work on the presents. So I've just got some colors. You can do whatever color fondant you want to. And I just found it's best if you started out with a ball and then using like a fondant smoother, if you just go around and eventually try to shape it into a square or a rectangle, you're going to get these harder edges. So I just kind of worked it for basically until I got tired of trying to make a cube. Um, so we're just going to keep pressing that down. Works if you go sideways as well and keep going around there. Once you've got like a little cube, I took the heart candies and placed them on the top for a little bit of a bow. And it's kind of like an easy cheater way to do a bow. And then using like either an X-Acto knife or a fondant tool, I'm just going to mark in where I would have ribbon. This, you could put ribbon on here, but these pieces are so small that it would be a little bit difficult to try to get that ribbon in there. So I'm just marking that. So you wanna make a whole bunch more of these. And then um, whiskey's kind of been up to no good over here and is unwrapping while I am wrapping. So what you can do to kind of imitate that is to take some white fondant as well and then make that into a, into a um, cube as well. 
running all over the place here. So I'm just making this into a cube. You could do anything on the inside really. I just did white just so it shows up so you can tell that it's being unwrapped. So once you've got that, what you want to do is roll out a piece of colored fondant. So I'm just rolling that out. You want to get it fairly thin because it's just easier when it's thinner for this little project. And you want it to be kind of ripped. So what I'm doing is just tearing away at the edges here. And you want to keep these extra tear pieces too because they kind of look good when you've got them placed around the present. So I've got that. I'm going to put that on top of here. I'm just going to gently press it down here on the sides like this, trying to keep kind of that general shape there and then just turn it upside down and then bring all of these ripped pieces up towards the top and leave it really messy and kind of haphazard like that. So then you've got some extra ripped paper here and we'll put that all up onto the top of the, uh, the, top of the cake. And you can ribbon it, kind of like crinkle it like that so it looks a little bit more realistic. So that's how you make the presents both unwrapped and wrapped. So now we're going to work on the candy canes and the little pinwheels. So what I've got here is I've just rolled out some white and some red. I'm just going to press it together here some white and red fondant, I should say. And then I'm going to try to roll it together and I wanna keep pressure on that to try to keep it together while I'm rolling it. And then I'm also going to twist it kind of at the same time. So I'm just rolling and twisting. So once I get that nice twist in there, I'll start to roll it again. You can use a little bit of water to help it stick together, but I found that that made it really sticky and a lot harder to work with than it is if you try to go without the, um, without the water piece there. So once you've got kind of like a good section, what you can do is trim off any excess that you don't want. You can use that for scraps for later. And then just keep twisting it. And then what you wanna to start to do is turn this little corner like that to create the little hook of the candy cane. And then you're gonna cut it. And then you can repeat that again for as many candy canes as you want to make. And then I just like to re-roll the end there just to make sure they're still stuck together. And then for the pinwheels, what you're gonna do is just kind of turn it and completely roll it into a, like a little circle here, almost like a lollipop. And then um, cut that off and then just kind of get it to go together. And then flatten it out a little bit so it looks more like a little pinwheel or one of those little mint candies. So you wanna do a fair number of those because we're gonna use them to decorate the cake. So now I'm going to work on the little gingerbread man. Now I've just got a little piece of the brown fondant here and to get the shape, just to start off with, I'm pinching kind of like up here for the head area. And then I'm gonna pinch four spots for the legs and arms. And then I'm just going to continue basically to work it. So I'm just kind of like pinching, pulling, pressing, trying to move those this shape kind of into be a general, more of a, more of a gingerbread man than a starfish that it currently is sitting at. You can trim off the pieces. You can make like the shapes kind of more, a um, little bit like basically go into these little, these little gouges a little bit more if you want to with a knife. But as you pull, what I'm doing is like then pressing back in to kind of make like the arms and legs like a little bit stubby like they might be on the actual gingerbread man. Pressing down and shaping. Continuing to work it like that, you'll eventually make it into an actual looking gingerbread man. So then I'm going to take my little fondant tool. I'm just going to get some eyes in there, some of the buttons. And then of course, because this has been um, a well enjoyed one by our little elf here, I'm gonna cut off half of his body here. You wanna make sure that you show the actual kind of little cut marks there. So if you can use a sharp tool to get those off, that helps to make it look a little bit more as if he has been devoured and enjoyed. So there's our little gingerbread man. So I've got the dark green fondant here. And what I've done is I've put it into my fondant extruder and I've got a small round um, little disc at the end there. And all I have to do is just kind of squeeze this and twist this out. And we're going to get the line for the lights. 
So I'm just going to do the, you want to do enough that you're going to get, you can wrap it around the elf, you can wrap it around the cake, and you can still have some extra to pile. So I'll just stop at this point though to show you. Now for the lights, I'm just going to take the lights, and again, you can use a little bit of water if you want to, and I'm just pressing them into the line. You might find it easier to just put the actual line here, the green line, onto the cake first, and then the lights. You can just figure that out for yourself, whichever one you think is easier. So I'm going to do that. Now, I'm, since we're done most of our fondant pieces here, I'm going to go grab the cake and start putting these elements onto it. So I've rolled out an eight inch round circle of brown fondant. And then here I have an impression mat. And this is the wood grain impression mat because I'm going to press this into this piece of fondant. And I found with this mat, it's just easiest to do it with my hands. Um, kind of because this is hard, this is hard plastic. It's a little bit difficult to roll on it. So I just found that doing it this way is just as easy. Well, actually, in fact, easier than it is to roll. And we're going to be creating kind of like the floor of the what's going to be underneath the tree and the presents. So kind of like the living room floor, I guess. So I'm just pressing that into here. And you want to make sure that you get all of the different areas, pressing down onto all of that part. So you'll get a little bit of a wood grain effect there. And then I'm just going to take my offset spatula and just work the fondant piece up here. And I'm going to transfer it to the top of the cake now. Just lift that up and then transfer it up here onto the top of the cake. And you just want to kind of smooth that towards the edges. I've rolled out my red fondant and cut it into a four inch round circle. And here I have a snowflake impression maker here. It's actually like just an fondant thing and it is used to make that impression of the snowflake here. So I'm just going to take it and I'm gently pressing it down and then pressing that little marker down there. And I'm just adding some, basically some texture here to the tree skirt. So I just thought it'd be kind of cute if it had a little bit more of a design to it rather than just a plain old red circle. So I'm just going around, pressing it into that. You can cover the whole thing. And there we go. So then lifting that up, I'm just going to take my fondant um, or my spatula again, transfer it to the cake. And I'm just going to try to leave a little bit, kind of some little wrinkles here and then I'll be ready to transfer the tree to the top here. So I put the tree on top of the tree skirt, and now I'm going to transfer the rest of the elements here. So I've got the unwrapped kind of messy area happening on over here. And then over here, I'll put the, uh, the ones that aren't wrapped, or that are wrapped, I should say, that the elf has not had a chance to get to yet. And then what I'm going to do across the front here, is I'm going to take a little bit of water and I'm just going to get that little part wet. I'm going to attach some of this candy cane line that I made. I'm going to attach it there. I'm just going to hold it while we work here. And then I'm going to put another marker over here with the white, with the uh, wet there, with the water and then attach that there to that. I'm basically kind of like making a garland that's going to go around the cake. And at these attaching marks, I'm going to put one of those little pinwheels that we also made. So we're going to need some water again on top of here for that. And we'll just put the little pinwheel onto there and hold that in place for until it sticks. So I'm going to finish off putting the rest of the elements onto the cake. You can add additional little peppermints to the outside of the cake as well if you want to to give it a little bit more color add some candy canes too, and then I'll be back to show you the finished product. So there you go everybody, how to make an elf on the shelf cake. My elf is pretty mischievous, is yours as well. Let me know what the name of your elf on the shelf is if you happen to have one. Now we have tons of Christmas videos that we have already done throughout the years and I've got a link in the description box to our Christmas playlist so make sure you check that out as well. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, remember to share it and subscribe to the channel. See you guys all again next time.